Hi, everyone, and welcome to another special Talking Insomnia episode. We have Matthew with us. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so glad you're here. And for those of you who don't know Matthew, you've been a part of the community. You've followed, it, followed our channel for a while, and you're going to share your story with us. Uh, but I also want to thank you because you are one of our Patreon supporters. So thanks so much for your support there, Matthew. Yeah, you're welcome. I felt like um, it was a good thing to do because I guess you basically changed my life so much. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so glad to hear that. And, and speaking of that, um, yeah, just just let us know, you know, how how it all started, and we'll go from there. Okay, sure. Yeah, let me gather my thoughts for a second. So, basically, last year, um, 2021, I was in my third year of college. Uh, so it started back in spring, around like March or so. I don't really remember the exact beginning, um, but I guess I had like a couple nights of bad sleep, and I don't even remember how, but I started to worry about it, and I. Yeah, I just remember like the next month, like around April, kind of noticing you know, this is like part of my life now. I'm every night worrying about sleep and, you know, not sleeping very well. And I don't really know where this came from. Uh, and so it was pretty bad there. I don't really know how much I was sleeping, but it was very little. And my main problem sort of came down to like falling asleep. Once I could fall asleep, I tended to sleep decently, but it was just really difficult because I would have like the the jerks bring me back to awakeness when I was on the brink of sleep or just like extreme nervousness, getting in bed, all that stuff. It's pretty normal, I guess. Um, and but somehow, so I went to Colorado for the summer. Uh, and once I got there, I was like living with some friends and my problem sort of went away. Like it went on vacation for the summer. Uh, so I was sleeping very well. Um, I wasn't worrying about it. Uh, that was great. And then I got back to Georgia. Uh, which is where I go to college and I went back to school and it started again like and it was worse than before and I don't really know how yeah that that happened I guess I must have just you know not I don't know what happened in Colorado but uh, for that for the next semester the fall semester as well as the beginning of the spring semester um, I was just not able to fall asleep uh, easily at all it would, it would take me hours um, I dreaded nighttime <laughs> I tried many things, you know, sleep hygiene, all the normal stuff, uh, like um, sleep rituals, uh, medicine, um, meditation, like all sorts of things. And I told people about my problem, which I also think was a mistake. Um, and then um, it sort of like reached its peak in December. And then I found like, uh, I think I also tried CBTI by the way, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia uh, in the fall. And I didn't find that that worked super well. I was disappointed um, because I read that it was like the gold standard for, you know, insom curing insomnia. But then in March of this year, I came across Martin Reed. And then on his forum, I came across your YouTube channel. And from there, I just like kind of, it felt nice to have a community of people who experienced like the same things that I was experiencing. Um, and I just sort of tried to stop caring and befriend wakefulness. And ever since then, it's been on a massive, or I've had a massive improvement. Um, there's been lots of speed bumps, but yeah, I'm really happy to be at this point now. Yes, so am I. Super glad. And you, you shared a very nice like summary of how everything happened. So let's let's actually go back to like, um, you know, you come you come back from this vacation and, and things are getting really tricky. Was it like, um, did you start like, uh, you know, trying some like supplements and sleep hygiene first and then it went to like, you saw a doctor or tell us a little bit more about like, uh, you know, how the struggle looked on a nighttime basis and how you felt during the day and, and all this so we get a picture of that. Okay, yeah. So um, I started trying things like um, ashwagandha. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, sort of. I'm not sure exactly what that classifies as. It's not like a really medical, like a, a pharmaceutical drug. It's more of a, I don't know, folk cure, I guess. Um, and I read that after like a few months of continuously taking that, it can lower anxiety levels, uh, which I, I'm sure it can possibly, but I think it's not exactly helpful for insomnia because it is adding that expectation sort of of uh, a cure, or for me at least. Um, but on a nightly basis, so 
yeah, I would take ashwagandha. Uh, I would um, put on like my, my blindfold. Uh, this would be after taking a cold shower. Um, uh, and then I would, if I didn't sleep within what I judged to be 15 minutes, I would get out of bed uh, and go like, I didn't have a comfortable place to sit because I was sharing a house with a few people. So I would just sit on the floor and like try to read or something. And I would often get really drowsy there and then get back in bed and, you know, wake right up. Um, and so I really, yeah, this is awful. Occasionally I would get some sleep starting around maybe like right before dawn. Um, and I was actually doing a, a co-op, so I wasn't studying at the time. And I would sleep in really late or maybe not sleeping, but I'd be in bed until like 10 a.m. Just because I was thinking, you know, maybe now's the time I'll get some, some Z's. Uh, and then eventually I'd bring myself out. And I wouldn't say that, honestly, the days were that bad. I would still, like, work and, um, uh, like, work out and hang out with everyone and my friends. But I think the, the anxiety of the whole, the whole, uh, the anxiety was the worst thing for me. Um, I think because of that, I judged that I was feeling worse than I really did. And I also worried obsessively about the night ahead like even if i was having a great day you know i was like well nighttime is coming and like that will not be that will be bad uh so yeah I i'm not sure how tired i really felt to be honest i think that yeah anxiety is a real i was gonna say uh it sounded like you know you uh you know you finally towards like the early morning you you started having some form of sleep and then you get up fairly late but it sounded like then you were sort of okay for, for during the day, but was, was it that the kind of the closer you went to bedtime, the, the anxiety started building? Did you have that uh, experience? Yeah, I, I especially felt like after dark, I would just, my mood would completely change. Um, during the day, it was better. I felt a little, you know, I was like, I was safe. It's not, I don't have to sleep now. I don't have to get in bed. Um, but I would still worry about it. Uh, but yeah, especially at nighttime, things yeah. are bad, yeah. And did you, uh, you, you mentioned med medicines, like did you, was that more like over the counter or did you see like a doctor who prescribed them or? Well, um, the ones that I tried were not like, they're just over the counter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a prescription. I was actually, this is one thing I really didn't want to do was take prescription sleep meds because yeah, I was worried about their effects long term and I didn't want to rely on them. So I had that from the beginning, but yeah. Um. Uh, never saw a, like an actual doctor, just a therapist for CBTI. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, somehow mm -hmm. like, you know how fear, fear drives insomnia, right? We know that, but in some way, like our cautiousness and fear of like taking like prescription medications in some ways can, can help us getting kind of even deeper into some struggle there. But anyway, that was just a little comment, but, and then at some point you, you oh, by the way, I wanna say that you had heard somewhere, I guess that you shouldn't spend too much time in bed. If you're not sleeping in bed, you should get out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that's like one of the top like pieces of information uh, on the internet that you'll come across when you search anything about insomnia that plus like the same routine every night before bed. And, uh, so I definitely tried that and I just and found then, it an unpleasant experience. Overall. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. I can, I mean, yeah, I was going to ask a little bit more about that. Like you got yeah. out of bed and you were sitting on the on the floor, really, because there's no comfortable place. And yeah. did you just kind of sit there? Did you read there? What did you do? Yeah, I would read, mostly read, occasionally like watch something on my phone. But also, you know, another piece of knowledge on the internet is like, don't get on your phone um, at night. So I really tried to not do that. Um, so I would read or just like write something. I don't know. Uh, one piece of like CBTI, one tip is to like write about how you're feeling when you're uh, having like insomnia, anxiety, I guess. So I would do that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, it, and then um, just to give us an idea, like typically what time do you think you would like go to bed? Like get in bed? Yeah. Um, like 1 a.m. Like 1 a.m. Something yeah. like that. And then this cycle, like kind of your getting out you're getting back into bed mm. uh that would last for for many hours it sounds like yeah i think normally like i would last see the time at around like 5 a.m 5 30 a.m uh yeah if it got past that 
that, that happened a few times. And I remember those there. It's like less than five times. I think that that happens right here. All right. And, and now eventually uh, you, you, you read about CBT and you were like, okay, I, I think I should try this. Right. When, when was this? This was like, this is September. In September. Yeah. So yeah. it's been going on for several months now. And then yeah. did you go to like a, a local therapist or how did you go about that? I found someone online. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and just tell us a little bit about like, yeah, what was the first kind of encounter like and what, what advice did they give you and what happened? Yeah. So the first, like the first meetings were actually really nice and reassuring for me because, you know, talking to somebody and you know, the, the therapist, like he was, he seemed to understand what I was, you know, going through and he was, you know, telling me that he'd sort of seen these symptoms before, which was great to hear because up until that point, I hadn't really like heard of many other people with this problem, which is crazy uh, because many other people do have it. Um, but yeah, so it was really reassuring hearing that. And I slept better a few nights after our first meeting because I just felt like, oh, you know, maybe this is actually curable. Um, but then he had me like tracking my sleep, like, like exact times, like what time I got in bed, Time I, how long I think it took me to fall asleep. Um, and then we would look each week at, um, I think, sleep efficiency and like look at improvements. And this definitely wasn't helpful for me because it really like triggered that performance anxiety aspect. Um, and just in general, like we started sleep restriction um, and that was brutal and I didn't succeed uh, for some reason. I just, even though I wasn't sleeping, I didn't. I couldn't stay in bed for like five hours per night. Um, and so overall, it just, it, it went from being kind of like, oh, this might be the way at first to feeling potentially more anxious about sleep at the end. Um, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And was it, was it like a six or eight week course or something like that? Yeah, it was, um, I think it, it could have gone for three months, but I stopped around like seven weeks in something exactly and i can I, I a lot of people share that once like they tried cbti and that didn't work it it was sort of a low point for them because this was supposed to be the gold standard i don't know was it for that for like that for you yes i think like after this point so probably i did that until october um and then from october until december it it got even worse yeah reaching the point in december of yeah the worst exactly. point Wow. Okay. So that, uh, that stretch, I'm sure really scary and confusing, et cetera. Yeah. But then, then you came across Martin Reed, I'm guessing on YouTube or on Spotify. I was like sitting in class one day and I looked up sleep podcast on Spotify. <laughs> okay. And, and how was that? Like, uh, uh, what was it like starting to hearing him, him, his teachings and his stories? It was really good. I, I liked the, um, like the sort of talking insomnia version that he has. Uh, I don't remember what it's called. Um, it was really nice to hear from, you know, people that had the same issue as me, but I was a little worried by, and nothing against Martin Reed, but like uh, uh, the CBTI aspect that he sort of um, advocates for. I didn't know if I wanted to go back to that, um, but I really found that, yeah, listening to his conversations was helpful. Got it. And did, did you start, um, you know, you, you, it, it kind of felt better. You hear heard stories like your, your own. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you start sleeping a little easier as well, or that was still quite a struggle? Um, not, I'm not sure if I was sleeping more easily, but I was definitely like my during my worries during the day were lessening. Yeah, yeah, very very nice. And then uh, I think if I remember correctly, his uh, his forum is um, you know it, it's it's open for everyone, right? You can just yeah. join, right? Mm -hmm. So you did. Were you were you active there, or you were you just? Uh, no, I actually, I, I joined and then I looked up like something about books. I wanted to read a book and then like one of the lists included, uh, I, I don't remember which one it was not Natto. It was, uh, or not. I didn't forget it probably. Yes. I didn't forget it. That's the one. Uh, yeah. And so then I was like, oh, I guess I'll look into that. And then I came across a YouTube channel. Yeah. All right. Very, very cool. And this was again, this was, was this January or something like that? This was. I think February or March. Yeah, February. Somewhere there. Okay. Very, very nice. So you came across our community, our channel here. And, uh, what, uh, you know, uh, what did you learn that really made a difference or what happened from there on? Yeah, it was. So I think the main thing was 
I'd had an inkling for a while that, you know, like obviously anxiety plays a big part in this, but I wasn't sure exactly what it was that I was anxious about. Like there were many things like this is going to affect my future. I'm going to, you know, be very unhealthy in my old age and things like that. But so I, I was trying to combat those things beforehand, like, you know, the things that I was thinking were causing my anxiety. But once I heard uh, you talk about wakefulness, like befriending wakefulness, um, I sort of, you know, I thought maybe that could be what I'm anxious about underneath all the like visible symptoms. Uh, and so I started just like being okay with being awake in bed. It just took, it took a long time, you know, like it's hard. It's not instant at all uh, to be okay with having a bad night of sleep. Um, because again, like after a bad night, I was thinking about like, I'm damaging my body irreversibly. Uh, which is not good. Um, but yeah, so like after a few months of just like watching your videos and sort of drilling into my head, it's okay to be awake at night and I can do things I enjoy. I can just stay in bed. I don't have to get out after 15 minutes. Like it's not going to be the worst thing or too uncomfortable at all. Uh, it just slowly lessened my anxiety. And and I'm not, I'm not even sure that an immediate increase in sleep time came with that. But by far, my days were better. Um, because I wasn't worrying so much about the night ahead. Uh, but then eventually the increase in sleep did come, uh, like probably a month and a half, two months, or maybe less than that, honestly. It was gradual. Yeah. Very, very nice. So it sounds like you, that the whole idea of like, okay, what we're really scared of is actually just like being awake and we can, you know, teach ourselves that there is nothing to be scared of the whole different uh, wakefulness idea. That you saw that idea uh, pretty early, and it was sort of interesting to you. But it sounds like it it took a while of kind of listening in and letting it sink in before that you know that translated into change. Is that fair to say? Definitely. I think like my the the anxiety inside of me was not. It was pretty deep rooted, so it wasn't going to change immediately. Yeah. Exactly, and that's just yeah helpful for everyone tuning in here to hear that. You know, it just takes time when we're scared. Uh, you know, I like to say that we, we can become scared very quickly, which is like, you know, how the brain is designed. Like mm -hmm. if we're really in the threat, we're supposed to be scared really quickly. So we take action, but then becoming unscared, you know, that's the process. And that's also like a caution thing for the brain. Like it's, it's not supposed to, well, it's, it, it just, when it's been scared, it just takes a little while before it becomes unscared. Right. Yeah. It's like unlearning fear somehow. Which is, yeah. Yeah. Well said. And um, I wanted to ask you, so yeah, it was a kind of a gradual process where you started sleeping easier, sleeping longer. And um, in terms of like just the, the habit of, uh, you know, going to bed fairly late, but also like getting up pretty late, like did that change eventually or, or what do things look like uh, now? Yeah. Um, let me think. So at first I was, well, actually, so in june i went on like a two months two month trip to turkey and i had to wake up early uh, i had to wake up at like 8 a.m every day and so by this point i was kind of just like sleeping better um and uh i can sort of i guess adjust my body clock however it, it really needs to be uh and my preference is honestly to wake up early so that's what i do these days too just around 8, 8 a.m i go to bed at 12. um but in the early stages i was I sort of went into like a rebellious phase of going to sleep really late because I was like, I don't care anymore. So I would go to bed at like two or 3 a.m. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, and I think, you know, that to me, that it sort of makes sense because it's part of like, okay, okay, like I'm not going to try so hard, so it's okay, I'll go to bed later. And then you found yeah, that exactly. liberating. Yeah, it was liberating, yeah. All right. Let's, I'm getting curious about this trip now. It was, in June, so I think you know things had already gotten easier. But was were you ever was uh, was uh, kind of insomnia still on the radar, or, or was it not like were, were you worried about going to Turkey or not really? Um, a little bit. So I was there for like two months, and uh, upon my arrival, I was worried. So I was really tired. I can't sleep on planes very well just because I I don't know my body doesn't fit well into the seat. Um, and so I, I got there, and like I was pretty sleep deprived for that reason, and I was jet lagged. So honestly, my insomnia did come back a little bit. I was worried, like, I really should get some sleep and, and figure out this whole jet lag thing, um, you know, in order to make the best of my time here. 
And so it, it did sort of like those thoughts surfaced, but the big difference was like just not caring about them as much. Um, but I, I did have like a few nights there, yeah, of like not sleeping super well, but it just went, went away again. Yeah. Exactly. Which I think that's it's so nice to hear because it just shows how like when we are educated and when we've been through some speed bumps, like you said, like they, they affect us less and less. And, and that's that's it's so nice to hear. And, and by the way, maybe one more question I had, you mentioned like uh, it was a gradual process and there were lots of speed bumps. Uh, was there a particular speed bump that was really difficult or generally do you have thoughts and ideas that could help, you know, the community in terms of speed bumps? Um, I don't remember like the specific speed bumps to be honest, because like, I mean, in the, at the beginning there were just tons of them. Like it was almost like a one week off, one week on thing. Um, but I mean, in terms of advice, honestly, I think what really helped me was to just remember that, and I'm gonna. I'm like enjoying my day. I'm very thankful to not have this immense anxiety and sleep and these worries about sleep washing over me all day anymore. And you know, I'm okay. I'm I'm happy to make it to this point. And yeah. And with that, just came like relief and less worries. And over uh, over time, the speed bumps have less uh, gravity. Um, honestly, yeah. Super nice, super nice to hear. And then uh, I guess finally here, uh, um, if you could, uh, you know, talk to yourself when, you know, when back in back in let's say November or December or something like that, what what would you tell yourself? Oh man, I I, I think you mean in, like uh, with the aim of getting better or like or more like like the, the whatever with everything you know now. Yeah. What would oh. you tell yourself? Yeah, to make it easier. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Mm -hmm. I would probably tell myself, well, so, so back then I honestly believed that I couldn't sleep. Like it, it took me a while to actually open my eyes and realize that my belief that I couldn't sleep was completely like fabricated by my brain, which was really weird. Um, so I would, I would probably tell myself to be more skeptical or of, of these truths that I'm believing um, that are being given to me by my mind, which sounds weird, but honestly yeah it's crazy to think now that i really didn't believe i could have a good night of sleep uh, back then. yeah truly like and just like a little comment to that i think uh you know the brain is like this as you hear me say like a million times like it's a survival machine and um like when it's noticing something it thinks this is, is a problem then it doesn't naturally it doesn't want to go like oh it's probably not a big problem it wants to go like this is a big problem this is you really got to do something with this problem so it creates these ideas like you can't sleep like you literally can't sleep you got this is a big problem like it fabricates these ideas to make us do stuff right it does that was my first time really experiencing that um so i wasn't prepared for it it kind of caught me off guard i guess yeah well, yeah i actually have one more question for you which was uh you know oftentimes this you know the struggle with with insomnia, with sleep, like we can learn from it things that apply to other areas of life. So have have you experienced that or seen that? Um a little bit. I, I haven't had to too much, thankfully. I mean, I do believe now that um if I were to have another like anxiety sort of issue, I could get past it. This is like my first big mental health issue, really. Uh but I mean, I definitely feel more resilient now. I feel like the fact that I was able to unlearn fear, I feel it was quite the achievement. Um, mm -hmm. But outside of that, I don't know if I've really applied it too much, but maybe one day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you. I think you make a good point, which is that if we haven't struggled so much, then there's not, maybe not so much other things to apply it to. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you said, also you have you have this experience now. If you ever need to uh unlearn some other you know unlearn fear in some other area of life i think yeah. you have something that can be helpful there so yeah uh thanks so much for for coming on matthew it's really nice uh, having you yeah thank you so much for having me it's been i'm glad to get to talk about this uh feels good yeah me too. it's gonna help a lot of people so yeah just be well now and, and stay in touch all right all right yeah bye yeah